Whenever a new version of Blender comes out, I like to make a video talking about five or six of the new features that are going to be included. But with Blender 4.5, there's one big change that I think deserves a video all by itself, because it's going to affect just about every part of Blender, apart from maybe Cycles Rendering. In this video, I'm going to talk about what that change is, why it's so huge, and how it's going to affect how you use Blender. Before we move on, I have a new course available called Isometric Spaces. This is a beginner friendly course designed to show you how to make isometric style graphics in Blender. In module one, I'll show you how to make this cute stylized kitchen animation. And in future modules, we'll cover environments like cyberpunk buildings and metro stations. Right now, you can save 25% on this course or any of my other courses over at Gumroad if you use the code JULY25 at checkout. You'll find the link in the description. In order for a program like Blender to actually be displayed on a screen, it has to use a type of software interface called an API. Now, this is kind of a pre-made toolkit that developers can use to converse between the program and the GPU, basically sending instructions to the GPU about how the program should be drawn on the screen. There's quite a few of these APIs. DirectX is a very common one. If you play PC games, you've probably heard of that because most PC games use it. And there's an earlier one called OpenGL, which is what Blender uses. Now, unfortunately, the original version of OpenGL is almost as old as I am. It was developed in 1991 at a time when standalone graphics cards were pretty much a new idea. The best graphics cards at the time had something like 128 megabytes of texture memory, and they couldn't even hold meshes on the GPU themselves that had to be saved on the CPU's RAM. So it's a very, very old system. And because it's from such an early time in the development of GPUs, it's a very high end system, which means it kind of tries to do everything on behalf of the program. It doesn't really let you get in there and like send specific directions to the GPU. It tries to take over and do the whole thing. But because it was developed when modern GPUs didn't exist, it doesn't really understand how to take advantage of all of the new tools that come on modern GPUs, which means the driver of the GPU kind of has to figure out the rest itself. What this means for us basically with Blender is that a lot of the performance issues we have come from using OpenGL. If you ever try to add a subdivision surface modifier and it just crashes your computer, or you duplicate too many items and it causes a crash, or you open a big scene file and it crashes, it's probably been caused by OpenGL, which just is not made for those sorts of file sizes and those complexities. It doesn't understand what the hell you're trying to do. So just over a decade ago, it was decided that new development on OpenGL would slowly stop and it would be replaced by a new standard, which is called Vulkan. The Blender developers have been working in the background for something like three years now to get Vulkan working as the main backend for Blender. And we're finally at that point with Blender 4.5. It's not the default backend yet, but you can switch to it. And I will show you how to do that in this video. So the performance improvements that come from using Vulkan as the backend should be available to see immediately. And I mean that very literally. I have Blender 4.3 here, and if I open this up, you can see we kind of get this gray screen and it lags a little bit just when you open the program. And if we open up 4.5, you can see that it opens up basically immediately. I've actually checked the timing on that and it's something like 30 to 40% faster on my computer with two versions with no add-ons enabled. Yes, I do have quite a few versions of Blender. In fact, I think that's bad. This is uh, <laughs> what I have in, in my Blender folder. So to actually enable Vulkan in Blender, you're going to have to turn it on. It will still be using OpenGL by default. You want to go to Edit, Preferences, go to System, and under Display Graphics, you can see we have the Vulkan option here. By default, it'll be OpenGL. You want to change this to Vulkan, and it will tell you to restart your system. Before you do that, just save, press here, save preferences, and then restart Blender, and you'll now be using the Vulkan backend. With Blender 4.5 using Vulkan, you can expect to see performance updates like this all across the board. For instance, here, I have a subdivision surface modifier on a cube here. The highest amount of levels that you're allowed in the viewport is 11 with Blender. So if we type in 11, 
you can see that it normally takes about four to six seconds for this to calculate, which considering it's only a cube is quite a long time. Whereas if we go over to the new version of Blender and we type in 11, it's done much faster. I've also done a timing check on that and it takes usually about a third of the time on my computer for that to calculate. Now the performance using Vulkan when you're dealing with lots of meshes or really heavy meshes is absolutely spectacular. Like if you have a little demo here, I'll just make like a very dense mesh. Uh, let's put this up to six. So this is probably going to be like 24,000, yeah, 24 and a half thousand faces. And we can go in and out of edit mode, no problem. I'm going to duplicate this. And these are just regular duplicates, they're not instances. Let's just make tons of these. Right, so we now have 200,000. We can just keep duplicating this. And Blender doesn't skip for a second, right? It's lovely and fluent to use all the time. I've been opening up these old Blender projects that I basically had to quit just because they got too cumbersome, right? They would crash all the time. Blender just didn't like how dense they were. And like we now have 21 million in the scene. Let's just copy this again. And I've had this up to hundreds of millions of verts, right? That's 42 million. And Blender's been dealing with it no problem. It's nice and fast. You can still select items. You can go in and out of edit mode pretty much instantly. And if we turn on proportional editing, even with this very dense mesh, it's really buttery smooth. If you've been dealing with lots of crashes, especially in a project you're working on right now, you definitely want to make this change because it's so much nicer to work with. The performance increase using Vulkan is especially apparent when you use texture painting or sculpting. Anybody who's tried doing texture painting in Blender knows that if, if you've got, say, a 4K texture and you try to paint with a large brush, it's extremely laggy. It does still lag a little bit, but nowhere near as much as it used to. And the same with sculpting. This is the same mesh that I was just using. So it's an extremely dense mesh. It's 24,000 verts. And I have the one of the cloth brushes on here. And this is just completely real time, right? I can just do essentially a cloth simulation while I'm sculpting this. And there's absolutely no lag at all. I can, like, this is just completely real time as far as I'm concerned. And I've tried this with much denser meshes and it works absolutely beautifully. So this is something you're going to see across Blender completely. Uh, the same with simulations as well. So one of the big advantages of the switch to Vulkan is the fact that it can actually take advantage of CPUs that have multiple cores for tasks that are done on the CPU. OpenGL couldn't do that because it was created before multi-core processors were a thing. The best example of that is probably when you compile shaders. If I open up the same file for my new course, it has very simple materials, but if I go to material preview mode, we have to do this whole compiling EV shaders malarkey and it takes a long time because it's single threaded on OpenGL. But if I open the new version of Blender and I open the same file, material preview, it's instant. Now that makes a big difference on a very simple file like this, but on a really complex file, there's nothing worse in Blender in previously than accidentally hitting the material preview but now it is so much better using Vulkan. And that's not the only change that we're going to see in terms of EV. Now that we have a more modern API at our disposal, we can take advantage of tools that come with modern GPUs, such as hardware ray tracing, which means that in the future, potentially, instead of having screen space reflections, we can have real global illumination and real reflections in EV. Blender 4.5 is due for official release on the 15th of July, which is next week. Don't forget to use my code JULY25 to save 25% on isometric spaces or any of my other Gumroad courses. The link will be in the description.